Hello and welcome to Totem, Tales of the Motherland. We decided to have some fun and introduce a series of videos about true myths and legends of Africa. Although we still own the rights to every story, the ones in this series are based on real events. We hope you enjoy discovering them or rediscovering them as much as we did. If you do, please remember to like, share and hit the subscribe button. Thank you and let's begin. Nyami Nyami, the Zambezi River God. A long time ago, the Tongas, also called Batongas, a peaceful and secluded people, lived a tranquil life and sustained themselves mostly through fishing and farming. They lived along the shores of the Zambezi River and had called that place home for thousands of years. Tongas had a well-structured society and believed in architecture that adhered to Mother Nature's laws. They lived in huts, also called kraals, which are villages with a central enclosure for cattle. The Tongas loved their location, especially because they were near their most beloved god, Nyami Nyami. Nyami Nyami is one of the Tongas gods. He is a water creature with the head of a fish and the body of a snake. He lives on a large rock that sits in the Kariba Gorge, right there on the Zambezi River between Zimbabwe and Zambia and he has enjoyed living there for thousands of years. Nyami Nyami and his wife call that place home and they enjoy all the beauty the land has to offer. For years they took great pleasure in listening to speckled mouse birds, blue-breasted kingfishers, Lillian's lovebirds and many more. Nyami Nyami does not enjoy this great place just for fun. He also plays an important role in the lives of the Tongas. He provides them with food during times of drought, as well as protection when needed. Life was very good for Nyami Nyami and his wife for a long period of time. The fresh air, blue skies and peaceful surroundings brought them serenity. But Tongas and the river god lived in harmony, with the humans aware of the presence of such divine beings around them and the god providing food and protection. Ah, life was perfect. One day, however, things started to change. In 1951, Plans were made for a hydroelectric dam to be built on the river to provide electricity to the region. This technology was pushed to advance colonial ambitions at the time, and groundwork began in 1955. Around that time, Nyami Nyami's wife had gone to visit another people down the river, and Nyami Nyami himself was philandering upstream for some time, thus unaware of what was unfolding. But he soon heard some feigned invocations from the Tonga people, a call for his help. Something is not right, he whispered to himself. Let me hear the people's plea and figure out what is going on. He returned to his usual home, to his rock, and to his astonishment, the entire landscape had been transformed. A large number of foreign workers had come to the area and had brought with them heavy equipment along with the roaring noises that come with them. Nyami Nyami wondered what these people were doing here. The ruckus could be felt on all sides of his rock. What is happening? It turned out that the newcomers, 
working hand in hand with a few locals, had erected right there on the rock, on his rock, the strangest thing Nyami Nyami had ever seen. It was a dam, a dam in the middle of his little paradise. They were in the middle of constructing a dam. The beautiful trees that once proudly stood in the land were now gone. Yes, gone were all the mukulas, the baobas, the mutondos, and other lush vegetation that proudly covered this portion of the Zambezi. The entire Miombo had been replaced by a giant lake. Lake Kariba, the largest man-made lake in the world, sat on Nyami Nyami's home. Who authorized this? Who let this happen? Didn't they know that this was his home? How dare these humans do this to him after all he had done for them? Little did Nyami Nyami know that the people had been forcibly displaced to make room for the lake and the dam. 57,000 Patongas had been forced to abandon their homes, cattle, fields, and their entire way of life to move to a remote area unfamiliar to them and where they would have to start over. All their fields and homes were now flooded. In an attempt to protest such an injustice, they called out to their protector, Nyami Nyami, to come and help them. But that was not even the worst part for Nyami Nyami. See, because of the newly constructed dam, Nyami Nyami was now separated from his wife. She was on the other side of the dam. He was fuming. He had to stop this madness. Nyami Nyami pounded on the rock where the dam sat with all his strength, causing the ground to shake violently and the rising waters to sweep many of the workers off the dam and destroying part of the dam. It was the greatest flood recorded at the time. No one had ever witnessed such an immense rise of water in the history of the river. 87 men lost their lives as a result. However, not a single body could be found in the deep waters of the Zambezi River. Search expeditions were organized and searchers frantically scoured the waters to no avail. There was a growing worry that the bodies could be eaten by the large number of crocodiles found in the lake, so time was of the essence. The elders knew what needed to be done in order to recover the bodies of the dead workers. They told officials that they knew how to recover the bodies, but the officials did not believe them. However, after three long days of unsuccessful searches, the officials became desperate and figured that they had nothing to lose by having the elders try. The elders took a lamb and they gave it as an offering to Nyami Nyami to forgive the newcomers and all involved in the construction of the dam, to forgive them all for the trespasses. The following day, the bodies were recovered. All were found and all were intact despite the river being full of crocodiles. The offering seemed to appease Nyami Nyami at that time. The dam construction resumed a year later, and in 1959, it was completed. Nevertheless, Nyami Nyami is still angry at what happened, especially because he still tries to reconnect with his wife, whom he has been separated from since then. The dam is a physical barrier between them. It is believed that
that Nyami Nyami's anger will continue until the dam is gone so he can be reunited with his wife. Sometimes tremors can be felt in Kariba Lake. Tremors that remind everybody that Nyami Nyami's desire to see his wife again is still very much alive. Some say that the tremors are caused by the weight of the water in the lake. And others say that the calf was simply eaten by crocodiles, which begs the question of how come the crocodiles did not touch the dead bodies then? One thing everyone agrees on is that the tremors are real and many a Tongan believe that those tremors are an unsettling reminder of the mighty Zambezi God and he will break the dam again. Only time will tell whether they are right or wrong. The end.